Welcome to William & Mary Law School's Veterans Benefits Clinic channel. The videos on this channel are made by law school students and professors working in the Veterans Benefits Clinic at William & Mary Law School in Williamsburg, Virginia. This channel is not affiliated with the United States Department of Veterans Affairs. The information provided in these videos should not be considered legal advice applicable to your specific situation. The purpose of these videos is to give you general information about the veterans' benefits process and common sense suggestions on working within the VA to seek compensation. For more information about the Veterans Benefits Clinic, please visit our website at law.wm.edu slash veterans. Hello, my name is Dave Johnson, and I will be introducing you to the first video in a series of videos that is designed to provide helpful information about the Veteran Affairs Claims Process. The videos are made in conjunction with the Veterans Benefit Clinic at the William & Mary School of Law and are not affiliated with the United States Department of Veterans Affairs. The purpose of this first video is to give an introduction to the Veterans Benefits Administration and its disability claims system. First, I will introduce you to the structure of the Veterans Benefit Administration so that you will know where it fits in the federal government and what its main components are. Next, I will explain how a claim can be started and how it will likely travel through the claims system. And finally, I will conclude with where you can go to get more information on the Veterans Benefits Administration claims process. First, I am going to start with where the Veterans Benefits Administration fits in the federal government. The Department of Veterans Affairs, more commonly known as the VA, is one of only 15 cabinet-level administrative departments that work under the President to execute the federal laws of the United States. The VA is divided into three separate and different service lines. The Veterans Health Administration, or VHA, deals with all health care services related to veterans. Likewise, the National Cemetery Administration handles the management of all national and state veterans' cemeteries. The third and final line, the Veterans Benefits Administration, or VBA, deals with all benefit claims related to being a veteran, such as disability compensation claims. Disability compensation claims will be the focus of the remainder of this presentation. Remember that the VBA is different from the VHA. Now that you know where the Veterans Benefits Administration fits into the government, I want to introduce you to the main components of the VBA system. The regional offices, or ROs, are responsible for actually managing the initial claims process. In Virginia, the regional office is located in Roanoke. By going to the VA website, you can locate the regional office for your area. The regional office reviews new claims, develops them, and ultimately decides what level of compensation the veteran should receive for each claim. If the claim is approved at this level or any higher level, then the veteran gets the compensation that they applied for, and there is nothing further that needs to be done in regard to that claim. However, if the veteran disagrees with the regional office's decision, then the result can be appealed to a higher authority. The Board of Veterans Appeals, or BVA, is the first place that a veteran can appeal a decision. There are also several levels after the BVA that a claim can be appealed to, but ultimately, the appeals process stops at the Supreme Court. Still, it is rare that a claim makes it all the way to the Supreme Court. Next, I will move on to the second topic of this presentation, which includes how to start a claim and how that claim travels through the Veteran Benefits Administration claims process. There are three main ways to start a claim for disability benefits in the VA system. The first way is through the pre-discharge program. As a service member is getting close to leaving the military, they may be introduced to this program. Another way to apply for disability benefits is through the new online application that is available at the VA's website. The last and most common way to apply for disability benefits is at your local regional office. To start the claims process, the veteran needs to send a written application for benefits to their regional office. VA Form 21-526 is the formal application for benefits, and it is always appropriate to use this form to begin the process. However, an informal written claim that identifies the type of service-connected disability that the veteran is requesting compensation for should be enough to start the process as well. 
Let's take a look at an overview of the claims route through the system. In step one, the veteran files a claim which starts the process. In step two, the regional office receives the claim and takes several actions that lead up to a decision. First, the regional office will determine whether a veteran meets the eligibility requirements to apply for compensation. Next, the regional office will attempt to develop the claim. This may include requesting more information from the veteran or sending the veteran to medical exams to verify a current disability. Once the regional office is satisfied that there is no new information, it will decide the claim and issue a notification letter as well as a rating decision to the veteran. If the veteran agrees with the decision, then the process ends here. If the veteran disagrees, however, the veteran has one year to file a notice of disagreement with the regional office. In the notice of disagreement, the veteran could also request that a decision review officer take a second look at the regional office's decision. In step three, the regional office responds to the veteran's notice of disagreement and sends the veteran a statement of the case, which is a more detailed explanation of how the rating decision was made. The veteran has 60 days from when the statement of the case is mailed to file a substantive appeal with the regional office. Failing to meet this deadline could have significant negative consequences in regard to a claim. Once the substantive appeal is received by the regional office, the office will certify the appeal and then send the appeal, along with all information relating to the claim, to the Board of Veterans' Appeals. In Step 4, the Board of Veterans' Appeals reviews the veteran's appeal and decides whether or not the regional office made the correct decision. Additional appeals can be made, if necessary, once the Board of Veterans' Appeals has issued its decision. Now that you have been introduced to the general claims process, I would like to highlight a few notes that you should keep in mind. Additional supporting information can be submitted throughout the entire claims process. Therefore, if new information that will help a claim is found, it can be submitted to support the claim no matter where the claim is in the process. Also, a veteran has the right to request a hearing at several points in the claims process. However, requesting a hearing will often slow down a claim, and dependent upon the specifics of a claim, a hearing might or might not be useful to help the claim. Finally, there are a couple of things to note in regard to getting assistance with filing a claim. A veteran cannot pay someone to assist them until after the regional office has issued a decision. This is because the process is not intended to be adversarial. However, a veteran service organization or a lawyer doing work for free can assist the veteran from the beginning of the claim. This concludes the introduction to the Veterans Benefits Administration and how a claim travels through the VA system. For more information, check out both the Department of Veterans Affairs website at www.va.gov and the William & Mary Veterans Benefits Clinic website at the address listed on the slide. I also encourage you to watch the next video in this series. Thanks for watching and have a good day.